Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Maria. I'm a photographer. Uh, my whole career, I've been a still life photographer. That's what I've done for a living. And basically what that is, is I take, I've taken photographs of inanimate objects. That's my life. Um, so it's ranged from anything from pharmaceuticals to shoes to glasses to any kind of objects. That's always what I've done. And uh, my clients have varied from advertising agencies uh, to editorial um, to nonprofits, um, all kinds of stuff. And, uh, but a lot of that work is kind of boring. So hopefully today I'm gonna to show you some of the special projects that I have done uh, through the years and little things that I'm working on that I enjoy more uh, in the world of photography. And my, my, uh, my, the things I like are kind of varied, um, but hopefully um, you'll enjoy some of these things. So I'm going to start with one particular project uh, that I did in the early 2000s um, that I've never really done anything with and not many people have seen it. And uh, a dear friend of mine has kind of pushed me to uh, go forward with this project. And so I've been trying to see if I can get a little more exposure on it and um, it would be great to get some feedback. So I'm gonna start with a screen share. And basically what I'm gonna show you is a, um, a short video uh, of all of my photographs that I did uh, in this project uh, out in the Southwest. And I'll explain a little bit more about it uh, when I'm done. Okay, so I'm gonna do a screen share and I'm going to go here. Okay. Um, so this was a project that um, came about um, kind of unexpectedly uh, and um, basically I had taken a trip out to the southwest with a couple of photography friends and we uh, started traveling around uh, Canyon de Chez and Monument Valley and a lot of these places out in the southwest and uh, I wound up uh, befriending uh, one of the uh, Native Americans, uh, his name was Travis, uh, who he was uh, the, uh, one of the people in this uh, 
uh, in this series who had the flute and he's actually the one who um, uh, did the music that I used for the background. And uh, by getting to know him, I, he, he needed some photographs for his CD that he was coming out with. And I had asked him if he would be able to gather some of the people from the area uh, if they wanted to come to sit for portraits. And I uh, started going back. I went back about five, six times with a ton of equipment because back then I was shooting large format film. It was all four by five. And uh, it was... Um, uh, it was a lot of stuff to carry. Uh, we shot four by five film is about four by five inches. And that means you have to take holders and uh, uh, Polaroid backs to do uh, uh, exposure tests. And it's very different than shooting digital today. So um, that's how I uh, started this project. And uh, throughout the course of five, six years that I went back uh, from time to time, um, I shot probably about uh, 60 uh, Native Americans from the Chinle uh, Navajo Nation. And it was just a great experience. It was um, really pretty wonderful. They were incredible people. And uh, I learned so much uh, about them. And, um, and it was just a, a pleasure. And I've never really done anything with these photographs. Again, you know, my whole life uh, as a career, basically, I've been a commercial photographer. Um, so uh, going into the whole uh, world of uh, museums or galleries um, has kind of been a little out of my realm, but I'm hoping that I can uh, do something uh, with this particular project, uh, especially today. I think it has so much more uh, meaning. Um, so I'm going to stop the share here. If anybody has any questions about this, I could certainly try to answer any questions. Um, if not, I can also show you some other work that I have done out in the Southwest. Uh, I'm going to do another screen share. And um, this basically, uh, here we go. Uh, this is a series that I did out in the Southwest. Hold on a second. Um, there we go. Uh, this series um, was all done at the, what we call the Slot Canyons out in Arizona. And basically it's exactly what they are. If no one is familiar with the Slot Canyons, um, it's basically a crack in the ground uh, that was created by water um, over thousands of years. And uh, when you get there to any of these slot canyons, it's just flat terrain. Um, you don't really see anything. It's not a canyon that you can look into or anything like that. There's usually a ladder at one end and they let you go down. And once you're down below, it's all red rock. And the light is just bouncing off of every swirl and every angle. And it's the most amazing thing you've ever seen. Um, and uh, this whole series is all from the uh, slot canyons. Um, and some of these were taken with four by five large format. Some of these were done digitally because I did go back uh, in 2018 and actually shot some more uh, images uh, at the slots this last time that I went. Um, I, I, I tried to do this as a series of kind of abstract um, pieces because I just love the, the contours and the color and the, the effect of the lighting. It's, um, it's really pretty special when you're down there. I don't know if anybody's ever been out there, but it's, it's something pretty incredible. Um, so this is an entire series that I've done in that same region. Um, here we are back to the top. I think that's it. Yeah. Maria, I have a question. Yes. Question. yes. The, the color the color here is pretty similar to the real thing. Like, I've never been there, but the color is so amazing that I'm just wondering, like, like how is the reality compared with the photos? It, it's, um, it pretty, it's pretty true to, to reality. It is. It's a little bit more saturated because film actually, well, film, the camera actually sees it in a little bit more of an intense way. But it, right. it is red rock. It's red. It's red sandstone. And uh, when light hits it, this is the effect. It's it's oh absolutely it's absolutely stunning. Yeah. Uh, if it anybody has really not been beautiful. out there, you've got to you've got to be out there. It's 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 pretty incredible. It so this is really another, thank you, thank you. So this is beautiful. another series that I've done. Thank you. Um, so uh, let me see now. Let me go back. Um, I have and, a quick question. Yeah, sure. Work. Um, 
I do, the, the photographs are beautiful. I've, I've been there and I almost think in person it's even more beautiful. But I, I'm <laughs> curiosity of your subject matter. Do you um, delve at all into like sovereignty rights or um, any, anything that's more politically related to Native Americans? Treaties, well, poverty, stuff like when I went out there, um, you know, in the early uh, 2000s, it was like between 2000 and 2005, 2006, um, I did not. You know, we had lots of discussions about what was happening um, at the Navajo lands and all that. And, and I do keep in touch with Travis, uh, literally to this day. Luckily, knock wood, he's doing well. Um, you know, they've been hit hard by COVID. It's been a real issue. Um, and um, uh, it's really kind of uh, sad, actually, that they're not getting the attention that they should be getting um, because this is their land. Um, Have you thought of using these gorgeous photographs? Like, and there's, especially the, the portraits are so powerful, is maybe a platform for that? Um, I'm hoping to, in fact, uh, that was why also I created that, uh, that video. Um, I'm hoping to be able to maybe put it in the right hands and see if, if I can get some more attention with it, yeah. Um, and I have so many more. I mean, that's just a small selection. I have, I can't tell you, probably about 60 portraits of, of people from that area. Um, and they are pretty powerful. And it's, it's them. That's, that's the intensity is, is in their face. It's in their lives. It's just the way they are. Um, it's, it's pretty incredible. Um, and I do have, um, just, you know, uh, uh, releases from them that they did sign when, when I did take the photographs. Of course, I gave portraits to each one of them, too. Um, because I, you know, I always thought that hopefully I would do something with it and I just never did. So I think this is the time. Um, and uh, it is a beautiful place and they are beautiful people. Uh, so they deserve uh, to get some attention. Yeah. So um, on a lighter note, um, I'll show you some of my uh, other work. Uh, I'll start with some of the, uh, this is kind of a mix of commercial work plus um, also other still life work that I have done in the studio. Some of it is, was for jobs. Some of it is just still lifes that I shot just um, uh, for the heck of it. But let's just uh, let's see here, hold on, there we go. Um, so I've done a lot of pharmaceuticals. I've worked for a lot of companies um, uh, that uh, did a lot of medical uh, type stuff. Um, so some of that was there. This was for a magazine chocolates. Um, and again, you have to remember a lot of these shots are just plain and simple, but then, you know, in the surrounding area above, sometimes they would put type or they would put headlines or, you know, something. Um, this was an interesting piece. This was actually um, a job, but I also did it for myself because I was just so intrigued. Um, this was for a medical uh, trade journal. Uh, they were doing a story on people who, um, doctors who put in glass eyes and these were some of the glass eyes that they had in the drawer. It's pretty crazy stuff. So um, there was a whole story about it. And uh, I did a lot of work for um, trade journals uh, as well. This is something that I just did for myself. As a still life photographer, I love detail. I'm just so into like every little crumb, every little flake, every little thing that falls. And sometimes I do these pieces, you know, just to add to my portfolio to show detail and such. Uh, they're not necessarily for jobs. I had done an entire series of different kinds of pins. Um, this was one of them, this is one of my favorite ones. Um, so I did a whole series of bobby pins and close pins and all kinds of pins. Um, so um, this, is, uh, uh, this was also used uh, as an editorial piece in a magazine um, back in the day when the things were transitioning from, um, from uh, analog to digital. Uh, of course, uh, nobody knows what a typewriter is anymore. Um, stones. I, I, I love stones. I have a thing about stones and sticks and natural types of um, uh, uh, pieces of, you know, things from, from nature. Um, and this was not done in the studio, but I treated it like a still life. I did shoot it in four by five large format um, outdoors. Uh, it was um, uh, at a friend's house in Oregon. This is a commercial piece that I did. Uh, I did a lot of work for 1-800-Flowers. They have since gotten their own studio, so they don't use me anymore, but um, I did a lot of work for 1-800-Flowers. It's a good client to have. Um, this, again, is a still life that I did just for uh, myself. Um, again, I, I, um, I, I love the idea of texture and 
um, you know, just the, the details and such. This is another one of the pins, uh, the close pin. This is another 1-800-Flowers image. Pharmaceuticals, I've done a lot of pharmaceutical stuff. Sometimes, again, it's just um, something that is an editorial piece. So it would be like the um, opening of a story, that kind of thing. So um, uh, they give me a lot of flexibility to do what I want uh, when I do stuff like this. Flowers, I do that. And this, you know, again, sometimes I'm doing it as a job, but sometimes they're just so beautiful. I just take a picture, you know, a photograph for myself as well. Um, this was just a, a personal piece. Um, I have lots of watch parts. I love like industrial kind of um, uh, mechanics and, and uh, old uh, things. Um, this was also for an editorial piece. These were my mom's. She was throwing them out one day and I had to rescue them because they were just so beautiful. I just couldn't believe she was throwing them out. She didn't need them anymore. <laughs> Flowers, uh, real macro close-ups. One of the things I like to do sometimes is I like to do um, what we call selective focus. You focus on one detail and you let the background blur out. Um, this is all done in camera. This is not done digitally. Um, uh, this was just at a flea market. I, you know, again, being a still life person, I'm always looking at details and um, finding objects that, you know, attract me. Again, just uh, another piece at the flea market. Another flowers. If anybody has any questions, you can ask. This is a piece I did in the studio. Um, these photographs, that's my grandmother and her sister from many years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, um, growing up as a, an immigrant child, um, especially back in the day, you know, lots of letters went back and forth all the time. And I have quite a collection of letters um, that uh, we received uh, over the years from Italy. This is a commercial piece. Um, I did a lot of work for uh, an eyeglass company. More pharmaceuticals. Um, my big thing is I'm always looking at light. You know, as a still light photographer, when you're in tight to ob an object, uh, the light can make it moody. It can make it, you know, it can give a different feeling to whatever it is you're looking at. And um, uh, my thing is all about lighting. Again, another, you know, selective focus, pharmaceuticals. This was also for an editorial piece about dieting. Pharmaceuticals. This was just a, a portfolio piece that I, um, I just like the whimsy of marbles. This was at a friend's house. She was getting ready. We were getting ready. Actually, we were having a little Saturday afternoon picnic on the back uh, porch and I just kind of photographed the forks. This is a piece that I did. Um, these were actual uh, twigs of uh, greens uh, at Christmas time. Um, but I had recently seen this wonderful exhibit by this uh, artist, um, Anna Atkins from the 1850s, 1860s. Um, back then, this is called a cyanotype. Um, there was this whole process of how to create a cyanotype. Um, and of course, I decided I wanted to try to do a cyanotype digitally. And so I just did this last year for my Christmas card. Oops, I think we're back to the beginning. Oh no, this is, okay, here we go. Um, again, another editorial piece. More flea market stuff. This is just a portfolio piece. Again, you know, using selective focus where one thing is sharp and then it slowly fades out of focus. More 1-800 flowers. This was done actually with, um, uh, with, a, with a Polaroid film that is not made anymore, but uh, there was actually a specific Polaroid film that was created to give a sepia tone effect and it was beautiful, beautiful film. And it, you just basically wind up with a single image of it. So luckily, you know, once digital came around, it was easy to um, scan uh, a lot of the 
uh, a lot of those pieces. And now, you know, having it digitally is so much, um, you know, so much better in the sense that it's easier to, uh, uh, to, to share instead of having just a single image. More pharmaceutical work. And again, stones. I just love stones. These were stones that I had picked. I found these up at a beach in New Hampshire. New Hampshire has a very, very small sliver of beach because there's not much of it that really hits the coast. But there's this one small area and we took a drive up there uh, one weekend and there was this one beach that just had all these beautiful stones. It was just incredible. Um, I took them home and um, did this in the studio. I love tools. This is another obsession that I have. I, I have a collection of tools that I um, have gotten over the years from different flea markets and such, and I just love them. I love the shapes. I just, you know, I love how they've been worn and used. I love the way the light hits the metal, um, creates a lot of different highlights and such. And I just think they're amazing to know who designed them. I mean, I think, I think tools are beautiful. Um, these are, again, more um, nuts and thistles, flowers. Oh, and I think we're back to the beginning. No, nope, no, nope, we got one more. Here we go, sticks and stones, string. Uh, again, as a still life photographer, I just look at the simplest little thing. And this was just a little piece of string. I just loved, you know, trying to play with the light and the shadows and um, trying, again, also working with um, selective focus and trying to make something of it. This is, oops, sorry, that's small, but a little typewriter. And we're back to the top there. If anybody has any questions, I have a few more uh, portfolios to show. So, uh, this is another obsession of mine is fireworks. I love fireworks. Um, I've been shooting fireworks for years. And now, again, digitally, it's, um, it's so much easier to capture. Um, and I love the play of light and being able to to control how long the streaks are or how short. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting. <clears throat> interesting. And when you're shooting fireworks, you have to always be on a tripod. So it is a little bit challenging. I don't know if you could see it, but there's a heart here. This was one, part of the Macy's fireworks one year. These were like planets, like Saturn. This is what happens when you come off of a tripod. Um, and again, this is for the effect of it. You can see this, the lines get swirly. So if you give a little movement to the camera during a long exposure, um, you get a different effect. So I like to play with the light. And back to the top there. And let's see, I got a couple more things to show. Um, the Southwest, I showed you already. Okay, here, hold on. Okay, so here's a bunch of just street photography. A lot of this is random stuff. Um, I love to, I always have a camera with me. If I, if I don't have my camera, I have my phone. Um, and the best camera you can have is the one you have with you at the time. So you go with what you have. Um, and again, being a, a still life photographer, I feel like I see things a little bit differently. So I don't, I, I just shoot things that attract me, whether it's shapes or whether it's architecture um, and you know the lighting and so forth. This was at a, a friend's house, believe it or not, and I walked into the bathroom and there was the kitten just standing there <laughs> in the tub. Um, it was not staged, it was a real shot and just happened to be there at the right place at the right time. Um, this is going through the Lincoln Tunnel um, while I was driving, yes. Um, and uh, again, you know, uh, trying to get the lights to streak. And, you know, I, I love the play of lights outside at night. Um, you can do a lot of interesting things uh, with photography uh, that way. I, I love these chairs. I, I walked by them and I almost didn't stop because I was in a hurry. And I couldn't believe that somebody threw these away because to me, they're just so beautiful. They just remind me of this old couple. I don't know. They just look so perfect together. I had to shoot it. I couldn't walk away from it. This is at Coney Island. Candy apples. Details. I love details. Um, oh, 
another obsession that I have is the Thanksgiving Day Parade. I have hundreds, maybe thousands, I don't know. I go all the time. I love the Thanksgiving Day Parade. I love the big balloons. Uh, I think they're a lot of fun. Um, and I, uh, I try to catch something different every time I go. Coney Island, that's another one of my um, obsessions. This was at the park at Washington Square. Somebody drew this on the, on the pavement. These are lights, just streaking lights. Oops, sorry. Everywhere you go in New York, there's always some detail that's interesting. This is at the beach. The Verrazano Bridge at dusk. New York City. This is New York City also. This is uh, uh, at the flea market on 25th Street. I love water towers. This is another one of my little obsessions. Every time I see water towers, I have to go back sometimes and wait for the right light. And I just, uh, I love the, the design of them, uh, the shapes. This is the 14th Street Market. Have you this seen the uh, photograph? I'm sorry, say again? I was just curious with the water towers, if you've seen the photographs of the Beckers, I want to yes, say. Yes, yes. Um, They're fabulous. They yeah. are this German couple, okay, that did gorgeous photography of, yeah, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. They do beautiful work. I love their stuff, yeah. Um, this is at the Guggenheim, and this is with my cell phone. Um, this is in panoramic mode, so this is a, a really tough shot to get, but you have to, like, pan all the way up to get the entire um, uh, museum from the uh, skylight down. This is also panoramic. This is the, uh, uh, the train station uh, down in Fulton Street. This is in my neighborhood in Chelsea. This was after a snow, a little bird had just walked by. This is a new thing that I've been doing. I've been actually, since uh, COVID, I've been taking um, a ferry to get from Manhattan to Brooklyn to visit my mom because I'm afraid of taking the subway. So on this ferry ride, it takes you through the uh, industrial part of uh, Brooklyn over by the, uh, uh, the Navy Yard and Atlantic Avenue. And, um, and I love these these uh, towers, they're just incredible. And on different days, you get a different feeling of them. It's, uh, the, the weather changes all the time. So. I always think of these creatures from Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. They look like, they look like I think from Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> yeah. Those uh, cranes. Okay, we're getting close to more of a half hour. Okay. want to wrap uh, things up, I'll, Maria. Sure, I'll just run through these real quick. This is also from Coney Island, and there we are back to the top. Let me see, I have, I think, one more, maybe. Uh, well, I, I have two more, but this here, let me see. Hold on. Um, these are random landscapes. Um, city, uh, you know, little trips I've taken here and there. This is a farmland up in upstate New York, um, the museum. Again, I love motion and color. Um, let me go back, hold on. Let me just show you one more. Um, I've been to Italy many times. Um, I have a lot of family in Italy and who doesn't love photographing in Italy? I don't know. There's always so many beautiful things. Um, it's a, uh, my family's from the South and the Southern Italy is absolutely stunning. It's, it's all mountainous. It's beautiful. This is the view from my grandfather's, um, window looking out at the top of the mountain. This is the church. This is really interesting. This is one of my favorite pieces. It doesn't look like much, but there was something just so wonderful that day. This is in Sicily and these were fishermen that were on the shore. Um, and, uh, they just basically have a bamboo stick and they have a line out where they're fishing. 
And what they do is they perfectly balance a stone on the top of the stick so that when the stone falls, they know that someone nibbled on their line. I just, just really, it was intriguing to me. Uh, this is the Appian Way. Um, these are all from Italy. This is the uh, Trevi Fountain. This is Orvieto. This is a beautiful town in Calabria. And that's all. And that's it. So that's my, my, uh, my tour of uh, my work. And basically my studio is pretty much blank walls. I mean, I have cabinets and cameras, everything is put away. I have light systems and all that, but um, there's not much hanging up here to see. Everything today I do is in my computer. So. Okay. All right, well, thank you, Maria. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm gonna unshare. Mm -hmm. There we go, okay. All right, and so we're gonna pull up. I see we have a few people that joined in. Irina is here. So, uh, and also Hosea, you got on, I see. So we're going to in bring on Jennifer. Okay. Am I unmuted now? Yeah, you're unmuted now. Okay. Uh, hopefully we don't have any trouble with my internet connection because it's not fantastic. Um, so I also have uh, some pictures, but um, why am I having trouble with it? Uh, give me one second here. But I've uh, never actually shared uh, the pictures like this. And, oh well. So I'm gonna start with, for some reason, where is the file? Here it is. Okay. You're all right, Jennifer? Yep. Um, so I'll, I'm quickly gonna start with just showing you some of the work in my studio, but I also have photographs of the work because I know um, that showing uh, the studio paintings over Zoom is not fantastic. So basically, um, my main interest in art is art history, and kind of uh, the landscape and the power that art has. So I was going to start with um, one thing I'm not sure is, ah, okay, I see how to do this. So I share my screen. Here we go. I think this works. Share, okay. Are you guys seeing that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, this working. Uh, very early art for me. Um, I was in graduate school, and again, my main interest is kind of um, looking at art history and taking inspiration from art history, and then kind of putting it on top of my own circumstances. So while I was still in graduate school, I was very much interested in illuminated manuscripts, um, you know, from like the 14 and 1500s, and I was living in Brooklyn, and this was my interpretation of the corner outside my building at, at Nostrand Avenue. And there's actually a big target there now. But um, so I was taking elements of these manuscripts to make landscapes basically of the city. But then after I graduated, now I had traveled around America, but I had never been overseas before. And um, after I graduated, I, finally got to go overseas, uh, mostly because I, I so much wanted to see the art over there. That was my overriding passion, to go to the museums and the archeological sites. And after that, my artwork, this is kind of a transition piece. Um, it's called Dreams in Istanbul. And uh, I started in Western Europe and then I kept going further and further East. and taking inspiration from mostly Mediterranean. And so this is um, after a trip to Istanbul and some of the Byzantine pieces and uh, the mosque in the background. And Istanbul is the, a city of hills and water. And all the patterns come from art history. Uh, the top corner is actually from a Byzantine um, mausoleum 
Rome in Italy and Ravenna. And then this, her, kind of the top of her scarf is um, uh, a yeah. Jennifer, I'm not sure what we're seeing the right uh, image. Okay, maybe I have to close the other one. Yeah. There we go. You have to actually unshare and then go to the file. You can't just click it. Or you can select them all together to, to show and then you could go through them. So does that work? Not yet. No. All right, I got it. There you go. There you go. Okay, so sorry. <laughs> yeah, so that whole explanation didn't make very much sense. But you'll see that um, still the landscape was top of my mind. I, 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 you know, I grew up in a rural area and I traveled a lot as a child. So the nature has always been very important to me combined with history. Because to me, the whole, the obsession I have with art history that I find so interesting is, is two things, how it can uh, dash preconceptions. You know, I, I see a piece of artwork that's 4,000 years old, and I feel a, a connection to the artist. There's something that happens through time and space that, you know, and it, it just makes it so that you, ha you have to kind of open your mind, because if someone 4,000 years ago could make something, then maybe uh, they had something that I didn't know about. I don't know if you guys know, it's uh, like these... Um, documentaries about ancient aliens building the pyramids that kind of thing drives me crazy because it's like these people weren't barbarians they had just as much intellect and passion and artistic skill um so that's kind of what really draws me to ancient art is just uh, the connection to, to the history and how it can open your mind to seeing people that maybe you had preconceptions about before but now you're seeing them in a different way so this, and so my paintings after I was able to go overseas for the first time, started really incorporating these things that I've been seeing over there. And so like I was saying, this painting, we have um, uh, one of them, the, well, they call them the jamis in Turkey, but it's a mosque in English. And then like the rolling hills and the ocean and um, the part of her scarf it, that's blue with the little, I guess, stars. Uh, that's actually from Byzantine, and then her headscarf is Islamic, and then her face is uh, Paleolithic or Neolithic, and then of course the mosque is Ottoman. So I like this kind of layering of history, and I, so that that's really what inspires me the most. And the thing, the second thing that inspires me the most is discovering depictions of women in art, in particular. Because you notice when you travel, when you get to about, oh, I don't know, 300 AD, women just really start disappearing from the visual record. Uh, you mean, it's almost like shocking when you go to museums, like I'll take Greece as an example, because it's so obvious in Greece. You'll go through rooms and rooms where women are everywhere, depictions of women in all, all different aspects, you know, intelligence, power, seduction. And then you get to about three, 400 AD and it's all men. They're, the women have just disappeared. And you know, a little later on, maybe the Virgin Mary or some saints come in, but it's really um, like a slap in the face. <laughs> so the other, the second thing, and now I'm gonna try and do this right. Okay. Is I started um, doing more depictions of women. Why is this being a pain? Okay, wait a second. I see what I did wrong. Um, adding more depictions of women to my artwork. And that's where I started combining. You can see it, right? I did it right. Okay, I see Marta shaking her head yes. <laughs> Um, combining a few things, uh, women, uh, dancers, and then these mosaic tile patterns that I've been, I was seeing on my travels. So kind of, you know, uh, combining everything into one. And so this is Aurora, uh, you know, the goddess of the dawn. 
under the tiles. And she's kind of hidden by this uh, mosaic tile that uh, was in Paphos in Cyprus in a sanctuary dedicated to Aphrodite. Um, so I kind of like to layer these um, images and symbols of women and also nature. I mean, to me, the pattern um, just has this kind of rhythm to it that um, even though the pattern is very unnatural because it's hard lines, it has a rhythm and a flow um, to it. And so I, I have done quite a few, um, I call them my dancers. And here's Ruby. And these are all based on women that I knew when I used to be a dancer. So I used to take their photographs and then take them home and, and do pictures based on kind of how I felt about them, combining their feminine beauty with uh, some artistic beauty. And both Aurora and Ruby um, have the pattern from Paphos. And then my most recent, which I'm not done with, and I don't know if uh, anyone has any, I'm not sure what I wanna do with it. This is Olivia, another girl that I used to work with. And um, see, some people don't like that I cover my women up with patterns, and they ask me why I do that. And to me, it's about energy, it's about history, it's, um, but some people think I shouldn't do it. So she is much less covered, kind of as an experiment you can see much more of her face and her body than say the previous two. Um, so she is definitely the most recent. And then I also had done much larger pieces, um, which I call uh, mythic women. Um, these aren't real women that I know. These are women uh, in my mind from, from you know goddesses. And uh, this is the Red Queen which is actually a, based on a book I read about biology, talking about, I'm sorry, men, but how, how great women are. No, actually, it wasn't that, but it's much more complicated than that. And then I added in more pieces of, again, the history, um, the kind of tree. See, there's, if you can see it again, I tend, to, these paintings are big, so they're very hard to photograph, um, at least for me. I, I think I need Maria to come over and help me out um, because my paintings are completely patterned all over. So your eye can understand it and accept it. But a camera, at least I haven't quite figured the large repeating pattern. And so like this one up in the top corner, this is a, um, an Ottoman pattern. And then the tree trunk is a Mycenaean uh, blade from Greece from, oh gosh, probably uh, maybe a thousand BC. And then this is the woman who's lying there in a field of poppies and kind of a mountain landscape in the background. And then the pattern over her is a Roman pattern, I believe, but it could be Greek. They kind of have a little bit of interplay between each other. Um, I kind of love the language of the pattern in our history because if you really pay attention, you can see it evolving. Like, for example, I mean, this is such a dorky thing, but one of the most exciting things I ever saw um, was an Alhambra in southern Spain. And it was a pattern that combined the Greek meander with the Islamic um, four, uh, eight sided pattern. So, to me, it's just the idea that these some artists you know uh, gosh let's see that that's over a thousand years ago um from who where was he from was he muslim was he greek was he spanish but he he or she because there were women artists in ancient times although probably not in this particular instance since it's muslim um they decided to take these varieties and put them together and make something new that reached out to me, you know, 1500 years later. So I just, I, I'm just so fascinated by that. And there's like a story there. So, um, and then I, I have a few more mythic women. Um, I just don't want to go too long. I have Ariadne. Uh, who's a, who's a, a woman from Greek legend. Uh, 
I find her fascinating because artists uh, really seem to be interested in her. She is in a lot of paintings, more recent, and by more recent, I mean in the past 400 years, because that's the way my mind works. And of course, she was the um, daughter of King Minos of Crete, and Theseus came to defeat the Minotaur, and Ariadne fell in love with him, and they ran off together, but then Theseus got bored with her and um, left her all alone on an uh, island called Naxos in the middle of the Greek Sea. And, she, you know, I always, to me, this is her on the beach. And I think, and you could, she's really covered. You kind of have to see this one in person. And I just think, she, I feel like she was being strong. She was like, Ugh, who cares about that guy? But then, of course, Dionysus came and married her later. So I guess she had a happy ending. But um, it's just interesting because she is a figure in Greek mythology that a lot of Western artists seem to like to cover. And I, I like to kind of think about why that is. So what is it about her story that um, people keep going back to? Because that's one of the things I really, um, I don't know if it, I, I would love to get people interested in looking at more art. Uh, it seems like so few artists and so few regular people know their history. Um, I mean, we have this, as artists, we're part of this incredible thing um, that I don't know if it has, I mean, any, any parallel. And I, and I just feel like I wish we knew more about, or people were more interested in, in their history. Um, so i show a few more because I, although I still do the women, I've gotten more abstract in my work lately. Um, like this one, um, which is also one that, where do you guys go? Um, so to me, this is a much more abstract depiction. If you really look at it, you, you can kind of see two women and maybe a vase. And again, this comes back to the, uh, there's so many more women in ancient art. And it's like everywhere you look, there are women doing things. And, and you know, you see women at the well all the time in Greek art and in other kind of art. And then they just disappear. So it, this is just kind of me again, looking at this idea that um, women were important and uh, had, had a status in some ways. I know legally and blah, blah, blah. And if you want to get really into it, it's tricky but they were visible at least. Um, and I like that. So this is kind of, uh, this pattern is actually from um, El Real Alcazar in, in Southern Spain. So it's an Islamic pattern. Um, and then if you look much more closely, there's kind of some action like water going on behind. And then the two women kind of, um, oh, there's a term for that and I can't believe it just came out of my mind uh, but when they're they're next to each other so mostly at this point i'm doing a lot of abstract work um this is an uh, because i love this pattern um and this one's called shipwrecks and this is actually one of the reasons why, Maria, I asked the question about the sovereignty issues and stuff, because uh, some of my artwork, um, I want to talk, like, I'm interested, like, not interested, but like the Syrian refugee situation. I've spent some time um, at the, in the camps in Greece, and I, and I wish I could find a way to make that more prominent. Um, without going overboard because I don't want to be a person whose artwork relies on words. I want it to be visual. So I didn't know if you had figured that. But here's another one with, um, the, and this one's a combination of the Greek wave pattern with the Islamic pattern. That's why I was thinking of Syria in particular in this painting because it's both Greek and Islamic. And uh, well, there are people drowning in it. So. Um, that's that one. And the ocean is probably my other big theme, uh, women, art history, and nature slash the ocean. 
So I have one more and then I'm done. Um, and then this is, where'd it go? Stop share, share screen. Here we go. And then this is one of the more recent ones. Um, this is just called at sea. And again, this was from when I was over in some of those islands. So I have kind of a combination of this Roman Greek pattern. And then on the top is the very similar to the, the capitals they put on top and they're actually called lesbian capital <laughs> capitals. So I thought that was kind of funny because they're from the Isle of Lesbos. Um, not because, you know, they have anything to do with women love, but I just like the wordplay of that. So that's really it. My, you know, my main interest is is art history and um, that part of the world in particular because that's where my personal heritage comes from. Um, so I feel comfortable delving into it. Where you, you know, it's hard to sometimes delve into someone else's culture and do it the right way. So I, I really just, um, yeah. So okay, Jennifer. Um... I had a question. Um, does the like, uh, connection to Kehende Wiley's work come up? We you know in terms of the figure and patterning and also the showing of the African-American man in the heroic version versus not having women. I would be honored to be compared to his work. <laughs> well, you know, there's a difference there, but in terms of that patterning that. over the figure and how in the beginning it disappears and it comes in and out but had i don't you know has that come up at all and just you know that compositional choice yeah um for me it kind of it didn't start i mean i'm a very much an intuitive artist um believe it or not i don't plan things out all that strongly. I, I very often will paint something and then leave it for like a year mm -hmm. and then go back to it. Um, so a lot of my paintings have like layers of years that things have gone. I've seen new things. Oh, your internet's a little weird now. Wanting I know mine, it can be iffy. Um, but definitely wanting to elevate, especially like a lot of the women that I used to work with who, um, you know, weren't powerful, they didn't have money, they didn't have status. So I like the idea of elevate, elevating these women to like a goddess-like status. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's definitely a part of it. Okay. Any other questions from people? I do. Um... A little bit about the technique and uh, the size. Like I can see in the background, you have one, um, but I, it's so beautiful, the whole uh, connection. Like, so you do first your background, you work in acrylic or like a little bit of, if you can just tell us a little bit about the technique shortly. Sure. Um, well, I, I have kind of a specific technique. Uh, I, first of all, I work on unstretched canvas, almost like they're tapestry. I will stretch them for a show, but I prefer working on them unstretched. Uh -huh. And then I use a, um, a specific ground called absor absorbent medium, because I use a lot of watercolor technique. And this medium can also kind of give things kind of a velvety look in, in certain circumstances. And I use a lot of watercolor pencils um, as I'm building up the pattern. I very often will do watercolor pencils in and around it to kind of keep it some structure um, and acrylic paint. Yeah, it, it, oh, oh, liquid acrylic, not I don't like to use acrylic. <laughs> and I, I add that absorbent medium into almost everything because I love how it just has this softness. Oh, I never tried that. I would love to see them in person. They look so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I used to work on paper because um, I like using watercolor and stuff, but um, paper is just too, too fragile. So I found this absorbent medium to make canvas have some of paper's quality. So that's mm -hmm. kind of what I do now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, we hope to um, have everybody include some work into a show at the gallery at Brack once we can see where the phases are in terms of opening up to the public. Absolutely. So we'll get to see some of this work live, finally. Yeah, it does look better in person. Always. <laughs> it does. You have to tell people about, you don't have any pictures of the work at Fordham right now, do you? Jennifer? You know, I don't have any on this computer and I thought of it like literally after we opened up, I was like, oh, um, okay. I don't think I do. I, I just did a big paper project at Fordham using, um, I do have the painting that's in it, the Thalassa, but I, oh, I no, I'd there. like to, I'm going to see if I can pull up a picture and I'll do a screen share if I can find the picture myself. Yeah, I don't think I have it here. But yes, both Michelle and I were in this um, exhibition up at Fordham Plaza. It's these huge windows. And um, Michelle had done paper pieces from her project. And I did a kind of abstracted ocean landscape. Um, and I don't even have them on my website yet. Uh, yeah, no, I don't, I, I don't. Yeah, I can't find mine, but, oh, I can try one more thing. But yeah, I know, because I showed pictures of my team project from, from Fordham. But if anyone can, wants to go up there to see both our works, we're going to be up for a while now. I have some of the sea creatures that I did. Um, oh, gosh, but I can. What I did is I, I made marbled paper uh, in my studio. You know, this was all done. Uh, and we had already, you know, been stuck at home, and I was trying to figure it out. And uh, this is just kind of there was a pattern, you know, the the wave, that Greek wave pattern is behind everything. And then I put made all these uh, sea creatures out of marble paper. Um, that was. I don't think I have a picture of the actual thing. Okay. Definitely. Let yeah. me do my screen share and I'll show you. Okay. I have your picture up. Oh, you have it? Okay. Yeah. Here we go. I have, oh, there it is. Um, you guys see it? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, so those are nice. all cut paper. At the very far end, it's one of the paintings that I didn't actually end up showing you, but the rest of it is all cut paper and marble paper. And it was nice to work on because it made me think I was at the ocean. <laughs> oh yeah, it does look like that way. Did you, have yeah. you been to Crete, Jennifer? I love Crete. It's probably, I don't know, Crete and Sicily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see I it. Yeah. <laughs> And also, there was a place in Sicily where I went uh, a couple years ago. I think it was called Villa Armina. I, maybe you've been there. Yeah, I've been there. Like, and it's just like about. incredible mosaics, including um, some depicting women gymnasts. Did you see those? Yeah, you saw them. Okay, yeah, yeah. It seems perfect. Yeah, wonderful. That stuff. was actually one of the first pieces I went um, when I got interested in mosaic because it's so right. famous. It's incredible. But, yeah. It really it's also is. intact too. It's beautiful. Yeah. If you ever get the chance, go to Cyprus to Papa. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been there. So, yeah. Or but your work's there, beautiful. Yeah. Gorgeous work. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. We're gonna stop soon. I'm trying to stay an hour. Um, so our next one is gonna be our next virtual studio visit's gonna be on Friday. And um shoot. I've got a call coming in. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be on Friday and it's going to be with Tammy and Marta. Um, you know, we really want to get more people on here. So if Marta, um, if you have some people in your community to share, you know, share the... Um, yeah, I did it today. I did it today. Good. So let's talk. Let's yeah. Talk more. <laughs> because we'd love to expand the community that's coming to see our work. Yeah. Of course. Um, I'm going to send out to our students, of course, more directly to help with that. Um, but again, that's uh, on Friday will be our next studio visit. Cool. Okay.
Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Did you have a question? Um, Katrina? Well, I just wanted to, uh, we haven't, we didn't really have, thank you to both of you for really great presentations and the work is really strong and uh, good looking and inspiring and interesting. Thank you. We didn't have a chance to talk about Maria's work um, or have a little Q&A after. So I just uh, wanted to say, Maria, I feel like your work is exquisite and also your you know would you consider your commercial work it's extremely artistic and good looking and so strong and i feel it's kind of like really it so um it just it was really fun to see i enjoy how much attention you give to you know these insignificant objects that don't mean a thing and all of a sudden you bring them to the in the right light with the right background and uh they're just spectacular yeah i, I particularly agree the, the those images you have of the match and the safety pin were just i mean i just kept, i kept thinking about those those yeah. were absolutely beautiful yeah, I don't know, yeah, did you have series. more in that in that same line or? I have a ton of series, yeah. yeah. I do a you have a series, they're beautiful. Series, yeah. Thank you. Thank uh -huh. you. Yeah, I, I mean, that's been my, my passion is still life. And I just, you know, I love detail. I love small things. And I just yeah. like to delve right in and, you know, my, you know, I like to be able to play with the light yeah. and create a feeling for, for each of the objects. Um, I mean, I can see those blown up to really large prints. For which would be amazing. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. They, can, they yeah. can blow up very large. Um, yeah. Some of them were shot, you know, with um, with large format film. You uh -huh. know, back in the day, you know, the cameras that you throw the dark cloth over your head. Uh -huh. um, so they, the quality of that film is insane. You can do a lot with it. Uh -huh. uh, they can blow up very large. And then, of course, all the current stuff with digital also can blow up pretty large uh -huh. um, it's fun i i like you know just you start out with a blank table and a light and then you just create you right. know, objects it's uh, it's, it's interesting it's a little daunting sometimes you know i guess just like an artist has to put the first pencil point down onto the mm -hmm. paper it's the same feeling um you know you start out with a blank table mm -hmm. and, and you kind of create something from it so yeah. go ahead but, and blow them up yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kishore. And Jennifer, yeah. I, love, I love your work. I love the patterns. I love it. Again, yeah. the, that attention to detail is insane. I love it. It's great. It's really Thank great. you, Maria. Yeah, really nice. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And if you do need your work shot, um, that's what I do too. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> I guess we all need that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's how we found out about you, Maria, was because you would, you shot you would shoot joel's work and that's right I, yeah she got, shot my got work you involved right, right. Uh, and i also worked with helen too um, yeah as an artist and also commercially uh so um that's how that's how i met joel uh through uh, through helen so um, and it's yeah. interesting that you're shooting cranes now because she was like painting the crane so there's like there's something going on there too which is really interesting it's that'd really be a beautiful <laughs> show the two together yeah. And I have a ton of those um, yeah. because I've been going like every weekend out to Brooklyn yeah. on the ferry. And every time you go, it's different light, it's different, different time light, different day, weather, different weather. Uh, yeah. it's, it's insane. I actually texted a couple of them to Helen to show her. Oh, you did. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I told her she should paint from them. <laughs> and she loves them. Yeah, they're fabulous. They're incredible. Yeah. But you know, I find beauty in like the smallest little things. I mean, it's a pencil point. It's beautiful when you get yeah. in tight to it. You know, so. Um, it's just interesting. It's it's very different to work in still life versus fashion or you know other things. I'm 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 not you know comparing it in a bad way. I'm just saying it's a it's a completely different genre. Yeah. It's fun. Okay. So thank you, thank you everybody. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you everybody. You thank you. Thank you everybody. Bye bye. See you bye. next time. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. Thank you.